Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler, and I want to talk to you today about translating functions. We are going to start off as simple as I can, but I do want to warn you that some of this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, just follow along with me best you can. If you have any questions, if you're one of my students, please talk to me. Remember, sixth period, I'm in math lab. That's at least for the year 2019, 2020. Who knows after that? All right, so we're starting off with the graph f of x equals x squared. Hopefully you remember that being a parabola. And we're going to look for the domain, or just for the this particular example, we're looking at the group of numbers between negative 2 and 2. And since it's domain, those are our x values. And solid bra or brackets here. So that means we are including those negative 2s and 2. Uh, the graph of g, so keep in mind our old function was f. Our new graph is going to be the same as f, except translated three units down. So I'm going to read that in their speak, and then we'll do it in ours again. The graph of g is the graph of f after it's translated three units down. So g, that's our new guy. He's the same as our old one except three units down. So I'm going to write this out, but I think this part can be a little bit tricky. So if this part scares you, skip over it, and we'll just look at the graph. But if we start off with f, and then f of x, that being our y coordinate, actually need another set of parentheses there, then our new graph, so if we're translated down, it's going to be our normal x, and what our y used to be, and then minus 3. That's what our g of x is going to be. But again, if that scares you, let's go right into the graph, and we're going to go from there. So we have our x-coordinates and our y-coordinates. They told us in the beginning we're going from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. As we go, we might skip some of these here and there. But for right now, let's fill in all of them. And I'm now going to take those numbers and substitute in with our formulas being f of x equal x squared. So I have a negative 2 squared, plugged it in for x. For all of those, I'm going to square it. My next one is going to be a negative 1 squared, and then 0 squared. Now, I figure out what each of these are. Negative 2 squared, 4. Negative 1 squared, 1. Double negatives, remember, so now we're positives. And please, please, negative 2 squared, not times 2. So this is negative 2 times negative 2. Now we graph it. So this is my x. This is my y. So I have the coordinate point negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. Graphing all of those. Make sure you give me some numbers on your y axis and your x axis. That way I know what scale you're using. Oh, I actually just did that a little bit wrong. We don't want to have arrows, we only care about negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to end right there. Don't worry about those tails. We're not doing those. All right. Now our new graph, the graph of g of x. It's going to be the same as this one, except we're going three units down. So whatever these are, I'm now going to shift down a little bit. And that ends up looking like g of x is going to be an same parent function, same x squared, but shifting down, we subtract 3 on the end, and that's what this graph is going to look like. I'll write that again up here. g of x is x squared minus 3. That's what this function is going to look like. Let's do these same things. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I uh, used to be a 4. Now I'm going to be 3 units below that. So I'm going to take a lot of these numbers, and I'm going to go from them. Down 3. Used to be 1. I'm going down 3. Used to be 0. I'm going down 3. For this next two, I'm going to do it the way that we could if we maybe didn't know what it would look like. I'm not going to go off of the graph. I'm just going to go off our new formula. 1 plugged in. Minus 3. That is negative 2. 1 squared minus 3. Negative 2. 2 squared minus 3 is 1. And if you notice, that still checks out. 4 minus 3 gets me the 1. Now let's graph it. Oh, I didn't figure out what these were. So you'll notice, again, I didn't do my tails because we know now that we shouldn't go past that. We're only going from negative 2 to 2. But First graph is up here, second graph shifted down 3. So again, our first one, f of x being a parent function x squared, 
g of x is that same graph shifted down 3. If I wanted to move it up, I would have added a number here. Our next one. We're going to start off with the same parent function, f of x equaling x squared, typical parabola. Now, we're going to shift two units to the left. The book talked about this stuff, but I thought, ooh, got it on my desk. But I thought that it made it slightly more complicated, so I'm not going to talk to you about this part. Let's get right into it. So our first graph, it's the same as the other one. Let me put the other one back on here. Again, I went a little bit too far. I'm going to put the table in here too. All right, now our new graph. Like I said, we're shifted two units to the left. So this function is actually, let me switch colors here. This function is actually going to be g of x equals x. Since we're moving to the left, we happen inside the parentheses. I like to think about this, like if I'm moving left and right, I must be locked up in a room. I can only go up and down stairs if I'm outside of my room. People rarely have stairs in their bedroom. So I go the opposite of what you would suspect. So if I'm going two units to the left, I'm actually going to add two to this. If I'm moving up and down, I'm outside of my x. If I'm moving left and right, I'm inside with my x, and I still need my little squared now. That part is on the outside. My left and right movements are going to happen on my inside. So now let's do this piece. I am still going to stick with my negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Plug in those values in. Well, negative 2 plus 2 squared. These cancel. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Plug in a negative 1. Negative 1 plugged in. Plus 2 squared is 1. All right, now that we've got all of those on there, let's plot those points. Negative 2 is at 0. Negative 1 is up at 1. 0 is at 4. 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then it goes off my page. So I'm just going to kind of do that right now. That's what my graph looks like. But it looks kind of weird, right? That's not even what I wanted. So I'm actually going to do a little phantom piece in here. And all of these are going to be on the same side over here. Now, do you agree that that graph has been shifted to the left? You should. I'll square it up a little bit. We have been shifted to the left. The problem is my domain restricted me. I couldn't actually graph this part. I wasn't allowed to. I'd have to be more negative numbers over here. So that is helpful right there. Looks awesome. So again, if I'm making left and right changes, it happens inside with my x, and it is the opposite of what you think. I want to move left or towards my negative side. I have to put in a positive, whatever that number would be. If I wanted to go to the right towards the negative side, or sorry, towards the positive side, I would have to subtract a number there. Let's keep going. Now, reflecting. My original graph is f of x equals 2x minus 6. Let's reflect over the x-axis. So just so you're aware, this one is my y, and that's my x. Here's my original. It's already on there. I want to do this the long way first, actually. I'm going to pull that page back. Let's do this and translate it, show how it would reflect over our x-axis using just the algebra. My original being f of x equals 2x minus 6 g of x is going to be the negative of f of x. We know what f of x is. Just told you right here. It's 2x minus 6. Now, I'm going to distribute that negative sign to both of my terms. So now I have a negative 2x plus 6. This should be the equation of my new graph. Let's go over. Let's reflect it using just the graph and see if these line up. So here's my graph. Let's reflect. If I'm reflecting, sorry, reflect, bleh, reflecting over my x-axis, that means instead of this coming up, it should come down. And instead of this piece going down to the left, it should go up into the left. 
So this piece, instead of going up to to the right one, I should move down. This one here is up one, two, three, four. So it should now be down one, two, three, four. This one, if I'm reflecting, I should be at that point again. So now I've got three points. Let me connect those dots. All right, that should be my new graph. Hopefully that blue, you can kind of tell the difference. This one is reflected. Well, let's double check and make sure that that matches up with our formula. There we go. So our formula, we thought it would be negative 2x plus 6. This is slope intercept form, so that plus 6 means I cross up here at 6. Indeed we do. Slope being negative 2 means we go down 2 to the right 1. And again, indeed we do. Awesome. So finding a reflection across our x-axis, I think most people say the graph, is somewhat easy. Now coming into this one, we set our negative, our entire original function, distribute that negative sign, and we have our new one, our new g of x. Now let's do our reflection over our y-axis. This one is a little bit different. So to do a reflection over a y-axis, let's do the algebra part here first. I take my original function, and I put a negative inside with my x. I do want to warn you, sometimes this doesn't change anything. A parabola, for example. It's a general U shape. Well, if I draw a U flipped left and right, it's still a U, so it doesn't change. Same thing with an absolute value graph, or a V. If I reflect it, well, still a V, right? All right, now in here I've plugged in that. That means everywhere there's an x up here, it's now a negative x. So it's 2 negative x minus a 6. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. So that is what our formula should be after we reflect it. But again, let's do the graph and see if our function matches our graph. I'm reflecting over my y-axis. So this time I'm basing everything from here. This one is, uh, let's see, it's 3 over on this side, so I should be 3 over on this side. My coordinate down here is going to stay the same because I'm at 0. That reflected over is still going to be at 0. Let's see what we can do. All right, hopefully you can agree that that looks reflected. Let's see if that matches up with the formula that we really think it should be. There we are. So this negative 6, that's my y-intercept y-intercept. Do I cross a negative 6? I do. Do I have a negative slope? Well, that means I should go down 2 over 1. Well, in fact, I do, so that means we are a winner. Great job. Reflecting over our y-axis means we put a negative on the inside of our f function. So we take our original, and instead of having a positive x, we plug in negative x's. That's a big contrast compared to reflecting over our x-axis where we take a negative and put it in front of our entire function. Now, our stretches and compressions. These can be tricky. This first one I'm going to show you is a stretch. So let's plug in some numbers. I'm going to skip. I don't want to go from negative 4 up to 4 counting by 1s. I'm going to go by 2s. And without editing, this video is 17 minutes right now. That's really long. You guys don't want to sit there and listen to me for that long. All right, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and Four. Let's plug those things in. This is the absolute value function. So plug a negative 4 into the absolute value, it comes out as a normal 4. Remember, absolute value is just this distance away from 0. Negative 2, well, comes out as a positive 2. Whatever goes in, it comes out as a positive. 0 is still 0. 2 stays 2. This is not a negative 2 now. Don't be that person. Nobody likes that person. Well, I mean, somebody probably likes that person. All right, now our g function. So we are going to stretch it, so we're going to multiply it by 2. We are a stretch of a factor of 2. So I'm going to take the same x values, and when I plug them in, I'm then going to multiply the whole thing by 2. I'm going to take whatever my y value used to be, whatever that f of x is, we interchange f of x and y a lot, whatever my old y was, I'm going to multiply it by 2. 2 times 4 gets me 8, and I'm going to keep doing that, right? Keeps coming over, 
two times that number. And you'll notice now, these numbers are all twice as big. Let's get a little bit of a graph on here. Go back to the black marker real quick. There's kind of a coordinate grid. And I'll do roughly what the graph looks like. Not exact because it's a long video. You don't want me to take the time to make it pretty. All right, there's my original. There's f of x, okay? A little key, that one's black. This one's gonna be, let's do red. Be a sharper contrast. Hopefully this marker's good. Yes, it is. All right, that one's red. So I'm going to be twice as steep. So over here at negative four, instead of being up at four, I'm now up here at eight. Same thing over here. And then instead of being up at two, I'm up at four. Yeah, you get the idea. If you miss, you just make your dot bigger, right? So this one is a vertical stretch by a factor of two. I'm twice as tall as I once was. If I used to be here, well now, I've moved up in the world. I'm up to that new point. Same thing over here. I used to be down here, but now I got shifted up to that other point, right here. Here, went up to here. It keeps going up and up, stretching by a factor of two. Hopefully that was helpful. All right, compression now. This is a horizontal, horizontal compression. That means we are going to be squeezed horizontally. That's left and right, right? Like the cross and the H. So it's horizontally compressed. That's very similar, it looks almost the same as a vertical stretch, okay? Let's write down some of these numbers. I'm gonna do this and then just zip through on the video, all right? Whew! Now, I'm not like my previous editor who would put some cool music in here. I don't know where you find cool music that's not copywritten, so um, hopefully that just got done fast. All right, now we're gonna go over here. I plug in a zero. I'm gonna multiply that by two, and I still get zero out. Take a two, plug it in, and again, I'm multiplying all of these by the two, and that gets me four. All right, let's graph this. The old one looks like this. Remember, I'm smack dab in the middle of these two. I'm cutting these off 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. The new one, this one here. I am twice as tall as I once was, except it's happening inside, not outside the absolute value. I know, seems kind of weird still, but hold tight. Look at that, still happened. Notice though, on the last one, I, dang, I didn't put my absolute values in. There's absolute values here here. So I multiplied by this 2 after I came out of the absolute value. Now, I do it before. I told you, sometimes they look a lot of this, a lot alike, and they do in this case too. They don't always, so just take that with a grain of salt, I guess. That is horizontal compression. Now, I'll be right back. Need some other paper. All right, I'm back. Here it is. This we're gonna call our original graph. Here's the original. So now this one is round two. I've reflected it. So this one here, this is f of x with a negative out in front. This one is just f of x, it's normal. Now let's shift it up. So here. This one, I have reflected it already from the original. So we have a negative f of x. Now I've shifted it up, and this is three units, believe it or not. So it, it's the same f of x that's negative, it's been reflected. I shift it up three units. So again, I was here. I reflected it, you can almost see through there. I reflected it so that it was flipped this way. That's what threw with a negative out in front. Right here. Then I shifted it up three. 
That's why I added three. So our last one. This is the one that came from the last picture. This one is negative f of x shifted up three. Now we went to the right. We'll go. We'll do four. So this is I've been reflected from my original. I've been shifted up three. And I moved to the right four. Now every time I'm left and right, I'm within my bedroom. Okay, I can only move left and right in my bedroom, and it's the opposite of what you would think. So I moved to the right. That's a positive direction, which means I have to be a negative inside my, my parentheses here. So the original function was, I should have put that one on one of these. It was down here like this, reflected it, shifted it up, shifted it to the right. I reflected it, I shifted it up, and I shifted it to the right. I guess I didn't do that completely left or right, didn't I? Did I? Oh well. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please click that like button that's down over here somewhere and send me an email. Leave me a comment if you have a question. I make mistakes. If I did, just write it down in the comments below. I appreciate you guys and make sure you don't do drugs. Oh, and do math carefully and with enthusiasm. Bye now.